All right, there we go. Hey, Ed. I wonder if you can hear me. I can hear you very clearly, thank you. Oh, perfect. Your voice came through perfectly well. Great to see you. Good to see you, too. All right. So I wanted to introduce you uh, to my audience. Uh, so Ed Hall is my copy editor, my dear friend, and I have to say my teacher and savior in so many ways. So Ed Hall, I don't mean to embarrass you there, Ed, but um, for my campaign, I'm doing this, this crowdfunding campaign, uh, Ed Hall just sort of flew in and said, I would like to donate some of my time uh, to help uh, those writers and authors in your audience to improve their editing skills. And what, what that really means is their writing skills. And uh, when you offered that, Ed, I was just uh, so humbled and so thankful. And I, let me tell a real quick story before I hand it off to you, if that's all right. When I, wrote, when I wrote The Unbound Soul and submitted that uh, manuscript to you, uh, I honestly thought, you're going to read it and say, I'm not going to edit this thing, <laughs> because I knew, I knew how rough <laughs> that was. <laughs> I, I no. had no delusions on that point of how, how hard that work must have been. But I remember when you, you accepted it, and then you edited it and got it back to me, and I read it, I was, I was literally moved to tears. The magic that you put into that it was just so amazing. And since then, Ed has mentored me uh, in my writing skills, and it has improved my writing. I mean, I can get this last manuscript I was able to complete in about a month and a half. And a lar largely that was just due to having a better understanding of how the words can flow. So I don't have to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite unnecessarily. And of course, that's ultimately going to save me a lot of money in editing because it's less work for the editor. So, uh, Ed, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I cannot stress enough how, how valuable your services have been for me and for you mentoring me in my writing. Richard, that cuts both ways. I've learned so much from you and become, I, I've had an attraction to Zen and meditation for many, many years, but both by working on your writing and by talking with you as your friend, my life has become, no pun intended, much richer. <laughs> so, Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what is it you have in mind? So... I'm, I'm thinking about a tutorial mm -hmm. for writers who are interested on self-editing. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that every writer must be able to do to get to the point, one, where they can work easily with an editor, but more importantly, so that they know when to abide by an editor's suggestions and when to ignore them. Mm -hmm. I teach, I think this is, was, this year was the third year, I teach literary editing to college students at Principia College for their literary magazine. Mm -hmm. And I've used the same short story, uh, science fiction short story, uh, whose title is a newspaper headline set some decades hence. Uh, I, believe the ex I believe the exact title is Woman Gives Birth! Exclamation mark. Um, and so it's set in a, in a time when artificial wounds are the thing everywhere, uh, except in a very few countries. Uh, and so the, the, the main character decides that she wants to go through the natural process, which is looked upon as unnatural. Um, and the story, it's interesting. I chose it because of its many, it, it was in, in many ways, editors who approved the story let the author down. Mm. And so it's half in American English, it's half in British English, which is the... the the English that the author wrote it in. 
uh, there are many times there are abbreviations that an educated, a well-educated person would get, but then there would be things that would, or, 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 or I'm sorry, abbreviations only a very well-educated person would get, but then things that were science fictional that no person who lived in that world would explain, uh, the, we got on the HB and then parenthetically it would say hover bus. Well, if you lived in a world where there was a hover bus, you would just say we got on the HB and you would, right, you would explain from context. Mm. So it's things like that, right? Understanding mm. how different modes of expression work. Mm. Uh, and so, uh, but a, a contradiction that I think is interesting about the way that I work, because I am primarily a science fiction writer and editor, but also a poet, I lean t- toward a very uh, a linguistic conservatism, mm-hmm. as you well know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I believe in the old, very old form of the verb comprise. There is no is comprised of in anything that, that exits my shop. Is comprised of no, right? The the old meaning of comprise is parallel to, for example, include, but it's the comprehensive word, mm. right? So it's not is comprised of. The whole comprises the parts. The alphabet comprises twenty six letters. That's the only way that I ever let authors use that verb, unless it's dialogue coming out of someone's mouth in a mm. piece of fiction, mm. where people talk the way they talk. And so again, right, it's one, it's knowing what the mode requires, knowing that there's lots of bad grammar in fictional dialogue because people talk every which way. Oh, yeah. Then there's the notion that, well, uh, I think another detail in that story that I mentioned is they watch something on, in color on DVD. They would watch everything in color. It would be holographic, and they wouldn't know what DVDs were. Mm. This story said at least a hundred years from now, mm-hmm. right? We don't know what a uh, not a um, I, I forget what the early pre-film devices phonistoscope. Uh, you know that was the example that I use with these kids, right? Do you know what a phonistoscope is? And they mm. nobody knew, right? S- same sort of thing. So that's the way I come at it. I come at things historically, right? What does the readers, what will the readership grasp? What do they want? How can you say this best? Is the flow of your language logical? Hmm. Because story logic applies even in things that aren't stories. And there's plenty of nonfiction where the logic fails. And even though I'm terrible at math, I approach writing the English language like mathematical formulae, Hmm. which is to say, I can look at it, I can read it, and I'll know one of two things. If something's wrong, there's something wrong, something's missing, there's a word that doesn't need to be there, or things just don't add up, Hmm. or there's something wrong and I don't know what it is because I don't know what you mean by word X phrase Y or right. Or I I don't know what, uh, you know, this doesn't follow logically for it's a non sequitur is, is a sentence missing or words missing here. So that kind of sums it up. And, you know, I, there's one, there's one big secret I won't impart here. It will go only to people who participate in this self-editing ses- session. Mm-hmm. It's a lesson you know well. Yes, I, I, you know, I have I have learned and relearned and relearned again that lesson. And 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 it shows in your most recent work. Your your most recent writing has made a leap in sophistication, and I would even characterize it as suave. Oh, so so that's, that's very much thanks that, to you. I, I was. I, I was lost in a maze of darkness as far as my writing goes when, when I first began. And so, you know, the, the si- very simple things that you taught me, which were, were easy for me to wrap my, my head around, especially the way you explain things. It was very easy for me to wrap my head around and then immediately put it into my practice. And that, that was very, very helpful. That's one thing I would like uh, 
the listeners of this video to understand is that the way you explain things makes it, I wish my, you know, writing comprehension teacher, write, writing um, teachers in high school and college and whatnot had, had taught the way you did. It just made it so much simpler. You know, so I, I greatly appreciate it. I'm sure you can you can work wonders with, with anybody who's interested in writing and wants to improve their work. There, there it is. Not with anybody, but people who want to get better. A That's lot of people hire editors because they want a, they want a cheerleader. Yeah. They want someone to rubber stamp what it is that they've written. That's not how I work. If things yes. are amiss, I'm going to tell you. Yes. Uh, I, I work in candor. Uh, and I operate based on my good name. Um, so, so would this be a, um, a one-time course? Is, is a, what's the time on this? How would this, how would this, what would the logistics of it be for the listener? What would they ex expect? Um, time and, and how the course would run and all that. I'm imagining that we may get, uh, you know, zero to let's say nine people, mm -hmm. zero to five people. Mm -hmm. who will jump on this opportunity, which is, a, which I'll say is a bargain. Mm -hmm. uh, I get an, I get a $100 honorarium, for example, from Principia mm -hmm. uh, for teaching that literary editing class these mm -hmm. last uh, several years. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems to me quite reasonable that this would be hundred bucks, but rather than an hour, this will be a 90 minute class to accommodate more questions because mm -hmm. I presume there might be lots of questions. Okay, so this um, would be something you would do through the Zoom conferencing, but like we're doing exactly. right now. Exactly. It okay. would be done electronically. Uh, my preference would, would be that it'd be done one time. Okay. Uh, and ideally, well, we, we could just record it. We could just record yeah, it. Well, yeah. Yeah, but, but it would be done with, you know, with, with one or more takers mm -hmm. of the premium. Mm -hmm. And that way, right, it's not just my, my talking head. It's mm -hmm. other people engaging, asking questions that, uh, that other people who might not be able to participate live would then mm. get to watch and hear. Mm. And that would have value for them, even if they were unable to participate in the live version. Mm. So, oh, wow. um, yeah. this is exciting. And, and again, it's at, at 90 minutes, right? You're, you're essentially getting 30 minutes free. Yes. And uh, this is exciting. I want to stress, I cannot stress this enough. $100 for what you're going to get is going to save you money in the long term. And this isn't, this isn't the, you know, I bought that expensive dress on, uh, you know, on a deal. So I saved you $100. It's not that kind of thing. I mean, quite literally, this $100 is going to improve your writing such that if you're publishing anything, you're much more likely to get sales. You're much more, uh, you're going to be much more proud of the end product. And you're going to save on editor fees from here on out as they look at your, your manuscript and find out that there's going to be less work for them. There's a good chance that you're, this is going to make you money, save you money and make you money in the long term, just because your writing is going to improve and you, the perception of your writing is going to improve as well. Uh, indeed, Richard, at the risk of embarrassing you, I would like you to tell me where you are in terms of Amazon sales in your category, please. Uh, so if we probably had about uh, 50,000 book sales now, I would guess. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's, that's not chicken feed. No, not at all. Not at all. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's been amazing to be honest. And like I said, if it, if I had not, I revised the unbound soul three times now. And each time that I've done it, you, know, you worked miracles on the first one, but you know, you're, you're instructing me each time we're going through this with each book that I've done, you you're, You've been instructive, and that has improved the writing. And, and finally, now I feel like oh, it's, it's at a point where my, uh, my real intention is flowing through the book in as simple a fashion as possible, right? This very, the topic is, is a little bit difficult to, to put into words to begin with, so there's already that challenge. But you've allowed this to be done in as simple a way as possible, and that is, as far as I'm concerned, is gold. I have editors. My editors are uh, prize-winning novelists. Mm. I learn from them, and I pass along their lessons to others. A, a, a good and, and trustworthy editor is worth 
her or his weight, not in gold, but in platinum. <laughs> I agree. I absolutely agree. So, and this is right? one area where self-publishing authors tend to fall flat on their face. Oftentimes, I, I, I feel they, they're going for the cheapest uh, editor possible, and, and it shows in their work. Yeah. It shows in their work. Yeah, I've, I've, I see it a lot. Um, it's really unfortunate and, and people judge, you know, I, I judge books that I purchase nowadays. I have a very simple rule about, I'm not going to state it here. I am going to state it in the class. Yes. And it, it gets right at the heart of one of the two commonplace sentence structures that you see in English that have no place in English. Mm -hmm. um, one of them, one of them can be okay. Actually, I worked on an essay today that was full of this construction and every last one of them was pretty much okay. But a lot of people use it in the field that I edit regularly and they do it to such an extent that it starts to crowd out every other sort of sentence structure. Yes. And when that happens, Right. This 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 essay I worked on today, there was great variety. There were simple sentences. Um, there were more complex sentences um, and compound sentences, all sorts of things. Whereas I see this, the 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 less pernicious of these two structures. I see it so often that I think to myself, what, is it a chip? Did people download it into their brains? The other it, one. It's actually taught one, in school. It's actually uh, taught in well, school, I suspect. The, the, one I'm, the one I'm thinking of probably gets taught in art school or gets no. seen in art school. The other one you can see all throughout English literature at, uh, at every rung of the ladder from Pulp Fiction through the classics. Hmm. There's one classic in particular, one of the most famous sentences in English hmm. has this construction. And I like to argue that reasonably it should have been the last time that construction appeared. No <laughs> for it now. Well, what I, what right? I know the, the, book, the book now is, is, is decades, if not hundreds of years behind us. There's no reason to be iterating that particular construction. And again, I'm not going to say what it is here, but take the class, you'll learn it. And once, yeah. once you see it, you can never unsee it. That's the truth of it. And I found that once you pointed this out to me, it, it actually helped, it, it improved the efficiency of my thinking, which was an unexpected event, event. It was an unexpected event. So I, and that's going to play back into all of your communications and, and the way that you process data from here on out. So yes, I, Richard, I, I, just, I, just, just pardon my interruption, just as your meditative exercises rewire the brain so too does an awareness of what elegant muscular writing looks like on the page and once yes. you know it you'll strive for it for the rest of your life and you will never backtrack into the sort of writing you did before you learn right. what that kind of writing looks like that's right yeah, that's right yeah, you can't, as you, just as you said, you cannot unsee it. And I, what I definitely notice is my thinking has become much more efficient as a result of this, these very simple things that you've, uh, that you've guided me through in my language construction. So we're talking changes in the brain. That's fantastic as far yep. as I'm concerned. So new pathways. Yep. Richard, yep. that's about everything I have to say, I think. Well, I just want to thank you again for offering this up and for your support. And uh, we'll get this out there. So Excellent. Thank you so much, Ed. No, Richard, as always, thank you. Have a great evening. You too.